All right, hi guys. This week we are learning about value. Value is when you take different colors. You have some that are darker and some that are lighter, and those are the different values of that color. So for example, with uh, I took my crayon box and I got out the four different blues that I have, and those are each a different value. Some are darker, this one's beautiful. Some are lighter, that's cerulean, that's regular blue, and indigo. So I have four different values of blue. And when you take those different values, you can do things like shading and give, it, give your picture more interest, make it look a little more three-dimensional, which gives it more form, and stuff like that. And so as you can see on the little bricks of our igloo, we're gonna add value. We're gonna add value to our snow. Um, and a little bit of value to our clouds. So um, you're going to need paper, pencil, possibly a Sharpie, eraser, and some crayons. If you have to use markers, you can, but if you have any crayons or colored pencils, go with those because it's a lot easier to do shading and value with crayons and colored pencils. Okay, so get your stuff together and we'll get started. All right, so start out by folding your paper in half like you're making a book okay then turn it and fold it in half again and try not to overthink this step it's just folding your paper in half and making a nice crease then you're going to open it up and flatten it out now notice my paper is on its side where it's short and it's chubby and we are going to go ahead and begin drawing our igloo. Now our igloo, notice we've got our four boxes. It's going to start right about here. I'm just making a little dot. Hopefully you can see that. And it's going to curve up and over and come right about here. Again, I made a little dot there. And then it's going to curve over and down and end right about about here okay and notice it's about the same on each side okay and as always I'm going to practice with my finger first so I kind of have an idea and try to picture that in your mind try to use your imagination and pretend your fingers making a mark and think of what that would look like okay and then when you feel like you've got a pretty good understanding of it very lightly make your mark because remember draw light till you know you have it right now notice mine is a little bit uneven this side is actually pretty good for the curve that i want but this one i came down a little too low it should have actually been more up here hopefully you can see how that kind of evens it out a little bit and again this is a good example of why artists draw sketchy it believe it or not it gives you a little more control and makes it a lot easier to erase you can see how nice and easy that was to erase okay and i'm just trying to kind of even it out over here it looks almost like it has a little lump so i'm evening that out and there is the kind of the dome of my igloo. Now I'm going to draw a line here. And this is, you know, you might think that it's going to be a straight line because it's the bottom of the igloo. But it's actually going to be just a little bit curved. It's not curved a ton. It's just a little. All right. And so I'm going to go from here to here. And again, I'm doing it nice and sketchy so I can change it as needed. All right, and that's a pretty good little shape for the start of my igloo. All right, now I'm going to go over here to this bottom left box, and I'm going to make the door for my igloo. Now the door for my igloo is going to overlap my igloo just a little bit. That means it's going to be on top of it. It's going to be another arch. It's going to start here. And it's going to curve up and come down and end over here and notice it comes down a little lower all right now again kind of practice with your finger try to use your imagination and picture your finger making a mark and what it would look like and I'm gonna make 
a real just light, sketchy arch. All right, and there's the door to my igloo. Now there's another reason you draw light though, because sometimes when you're drawing something, you need to overlap it, and um, you know it's not something you're gonna see through. So I'm going to erase where my igloo goes through my doorway here. And remember, you also can use your, your good erasers. If you're here, if you're one of our face-to-face um, -face students coming to school in person, um, you have your pink pearl eraser that you can use. And if you're at home, of course, you just use whatever you happen to have there. All right, now I'm going to draw another line. It's going to be inside this arch, and it's going to be what I call a, a copycat line. It copycats the one it's right next to. All right. And that is because of the thickness of the igloo. All right, and it's at just a little bit of an angle there. All right, and then I'm going to draw right on top of it a little line. It's kind of at a slope. And then it curves down to the side of the igloo there. Mine's not looking quite right. It's looking a little harsh there. I think my angle went up too high. I think I need to make it this direction a little more. So if you have that problem, that's probably what it is. Yeah, I think it's, I feel like it's still a little too much. All right, and that's starting to look a little better. I'm going to round it out just a little bit to kind of smooth it out. All right, now in here I'm going to make a diagonal line that's showing how it goes into the igloo there. And I'm thinking this might need to actually come down a little further. So you can see how I'm just kind of playing with it and adjusting it until I feel happy about it. Um, but you know, however it turns out, don't overthink it too much. And obsess over it, which means you're worrying too much, which is kind of what Miss Thomas is doing right now. Um, do as I say, not as I do. All right, so there I have my little igloo doorway um, and the shape of my igloo. Now we need to make, because you know how igloo looks like big blocks of ice, because that's basically what igloos are. So first, I am going to make some curved lines because igloos are round. They are in no way flat. And to make it look like it has some form or that it's somewhat three-dimensional, I'm going to make these curved lines. All right, and it is important if you do lines straight across, it's not gonna look quite right. And even our younger friends can do a curved line, even if it's not perfect. Try. I mean, I I have an art degree, and my stuff certainly doesn't turn out perfect. All right, so now I have that. Now I'm going to make the little lines that come down. All right, and these are also curved a little bit. See how that curves, and that curves, and each one. So if you're on the left, it's going to curve this direction. If you're on the right, it's going to curve this direction. And you can use the fold in your paper to help you judge when you need to change the directions. And I'm just kind of randomly doing them. I'm not trying to overthink it too much. And believe it or not, with art, sometimes you can overthink things. Sometimes you have to just relax and let it go. All right, so now I have the little blocks done on my igloo. All right, now we need to do the same for our doorway. So I'm going to make some lines that they're going to go in the same direction as this one. So you can start down there and just kind of keep that going. 
Um, same thing here. I'm going to use the same direction as that, so I'm just going to go above it a little bit. And then we have our lines that come down. Same thing over here. Now these are going to curve a little bit, kind of mimic that arch. Mimic means copy. And then I'm also going to make some over here. All right. And I probably should line that one up. See how I have this line here? So that would go there. And this line here would go there. All right. And now I have my igloo drawn. Now I'm going to make my horizon line. Now it's snow, so your horizon line is not going to be perfectly flat. And then I'm going to make some clouds. All right, and I am going to put the sun up there. Even though in Alaska, they will have long stretches of time where it's dark 24 hours a day, and then they'll have long stretches of time where the sun is up 24 hours a day, which means all day, all night. So it's kind of crazy to think about. All right, so now our next step is Sharpie. Okay, so I have my Sharpie ready to go, and just like I tell you every single week, if you don't have a Sharpie, you can use a black crayon, a black marker, a black pen, basically anything black that you can outline it and make your lines bold and dark and just really nice and strong lines. And you want to, of course, erase any pencil you can see when you're done because you should be able to trick somebody. I'm not saying to actually lie, but you should be able to trick someone into thinking you just drew it with a Sharpie. And sometimes people, sometimes I do that. There's nothing wrong if you want to skip the pencil step sometimes on my videos and go straight to Sharpie. Nothing wrong with that at all. Just go into it knowing if you feel like you need or want to erase, you're not going to be able to. So however it turns out, you're just going to have to keep it. So if you're not completely confident with whatever it is you're making, you might want to start with pencil first. Like I said, even Miss Thompson does that the majority of the time. All right, so now I've done my igloo. I'm going to do the horizon line. Remember, the horizon line is where the sky and the ground touch. I'm even going to do my clouds. All right, okay. So now the next step would be I'm terrible at drumming, aren't I? <laughs> um, you're erasing. So I've got my pink pearl and my white pearl, and I'm going to erase anywhere I can see pencil still. And remember, those of you at home, don't get eraser shavings all over your counter or table or floor. Take your paper to the trash can to dust it off. Um, those of you that are up here at school, um, we should do the same. I'm sure your teacher does not want to come back from her planning period to find eraser shavings all over her classroom. All right, so I'm going to dust it off now. There's always eraser shavings all over my desk. All right, dust it off a little more. All right, and now I am ready for some coloring, and this is where value is going to come in, which is what we're learning about this week. So um, get your crayons together, and we'll get started. Okay, so like I said a second ago, what we're learning about this week is value. Value is when you take um, one color, and you have some lighter shades and darker shades. So, for example, I got out all of my blues that I have, 
in my crayon box. And this is just, you know, plain Jane 24 box crayons. I have blue green, I have cerulean, I have indigo, blue, and beautiful. All right, now I'm going to take another sheet of paper to show you the difference. Sorry about that. And that way I can also put them in order from light to dark. So there's this one. This one is just plain old blue. All right, so I'm going to just put that over there. This one is indigo. All right, and is that lighter or darker? Definitely darker. I'm going to put an eye for indigo. So I'm going to put that one over to the left. I'm going to put it from darkest to lightest. All right, this one is cerulean. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm going to put a C. And that is that a little lighter than darker. Lighter or darker? <laughs> yes, definitely lighter. So I'm going to put them in order like that. And then I have beautiful. Ooh. Okay, so that is clearly darker than these two. And it's even darker than our indigo. So that is, I'm gonna put all the way over on the left because that's my darkest one. And then I have blue aqua or blue green. All right, and that is kind of a toss up on which one's lighter between that and cerulean. Hmm. I'm going to put it over here because it, since it has a little bit of green in it, it's almost kind of in a different color family. So I have them in order. It's important to try and keep it that way. And I'm going to go from lightest to darkest, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to do the simple parts, which will be like coloring the sun. And I can just color that good old yellow and coloring the sky. I am going to color the sky with my blue-green. That way I can have my blues together like they're in, just like a little color family. And colors do have families because they have color groups. And a lot of our teachers call them color families. You also have, when you're talking about value, you can have what's called monochromatic colors. Mono means one, and chromatic means color. So monochromatic means one color. All right, and so I'm just coloring my sky here. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to finish this because I don't think you need to sit here and watch me color my sky. Um, you can hit pause. For, uh, hopefully you're coloring your sky right now as well. If you're not for any reason, hit pause, color your sky, color your sun, and then we're gonna come back so we can do our value and our shading. Okay, so I have my sky and my sun finished. And now I am ready to do my shading. So again, I put my blues in order from darkest. If you look down there on the bottom left corner, try to move them up a bit here, from darkest to lightest. Now you're going to start with the lightest color. And what I'm going to do is in the corners of my little igloo, oh, sorry about that. I am going to do a little bit of shading. So notice how I did just a little bit of coloring with the blue, add a little bit of an angle just on the right side and the bottom, okay? And I am going to do that with almost all of my little igloo blocks. Some I'll do a little less than others, like here you can see I did a little more than I did on this one. Some I may just make it on the bottom. And the key is variety. They should not all look identical. Okay, so I'm just, and if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, just sit and kind of watch me for a minute. And notice I'm coloring soft. Some might add a little more than I do with others, and I'm going to do that with all of them. Okay, so again, if you're still a little lost or confused, you want your lightest blue that you have, 
if for some reason you don't have any blues, um, you could use gray and black. And I you probably can't see it, but I got those out just in case I feel like I need a gray. I got a gray and a black and a white. And you're just going to do a little bit of coloring on the bottom of each block and a little bit of coloring on the right side of each block. Remember, if you're still learning your left from your right, if you take your fingers, your left hand is the one that makes an L. Your right hand makes a backwards L. So that way you know which one is your right. All right, so what you can do is hit pause. And now notice how I'm, I'm getting kind of a little more light and whimsical as I go up here. Um, but hit pause and do the same thing. I will fast forward to finish my blocks. Don't forget to do your blocks around your doorway. You'll still do the bottom and the right side. It's just kind of at a different angle. But it doesn't change what you're doing. It's still the bottom and the right. Bottom and the right. Okay? So hit pause and be sure you get every single brick on your igloo. And I'm going to fast forward and then I'll show you what we do next with the other blues. Okay, so I finished with my light blue. Notice how on the top one, because there's really not a right side, I just did it on the bottom. But if you added a little blue over here, that's okay. You can see I just did. And then in the actual snow, we are going to add a little bit of blue. You're going to make it look almost like a cloud in the sky. See how that looks kind of like the shape of a cloud? And you're just going to add a few here and there if it helps you to kind of draw that shape first. See how that looks kind of like a cloud? And then color it in just a little. And you just kind of do it here and there. And that is supposed to be um, most of you, some of you, depending on what grade you're in, you've may not have even seen snow in real life unless you've traveled to Colorado or New Mexico. But when it snows, you'll have little hills that kind of form here and there just from like where the wind blows the sand around it. So that's what that's supposed to be. And I'm going to add just a smidge in the clouds because again, this is about value. Value and color and shading kind of go hand in hand. All right, so that's my lightest blue. Now I'm going to move Actually, I'm just going to keep them in order, and I'm going to go to the next lightest one, which for me was just good old-fashioned blue. So now I'm going to go over that lighter blue, and I'm adding just a little bit of the blue. And I'm going to try zooming in a little bit if my camera will let me. I don't know if it'll let me. Oh, good. Awesome. All right. So. You can see right here where I've done the lighter blue, and I'm going to go in and just add a little bit of the darker blue right next to it. Some places it'll be right on top of it, and some places it's just kind of mixed in with it. Some places it's sitting right beside it, but it gives it another value because, again, value is each shade of the color. So like right here with my crayons, I have, oh, you can't see it. Okay, let me zoom back out. Right here with my four crayons, I have four values. I have the darkest, the next to the darkest, second to the lightest, and the lightest. So those are value. And so that's what you're seeing in this igloo that we're making is the different value. And again, if you only have one or two, that's totally fine. I just got out the ones that I have. And so I'm just adding a little bit of the darker blue in with that lighter blue. Basically, anywhere I put that lighter blue. Let me zoom out a bit there. I feel like you can't see where. There we go. So like right here, just adding a little bit um, around the doorway. And in here, it would be a little darker. Can you think of why it would be a little darker in the doorway? It's because um, you wouldn't have as much light because you would have shade from the door. All right, so I'm going to do this all over my igloo. Let me move down here. Sorry about that. 
and again try to be sure you get every little brick and then I'm going to go down to where my little snow drifts are those are the little snow hills and I'm adding just a little bit if you cover up that light blue completely you're going to lose all those that value basically because you're covering it up so you're adding to it but you're not hiding it all right so there is my second delightus and you can see that one went faster because you're not putting as much each time I move to a darker value I'm going to be using less of it so here I'm using the second darkest color this is indigo for me and I'm adding just a little here and there not too much you don't want to go overboard with it but also you are not scribbling I don't want to see anyone going crazy cuckoo with it plus this should this will turn out to be a really cool picture that you'll probably be super proud of so you wouldn't want to scribble all over it that's kind of silly all right so there's my light blue and again you can see that one went even faster and now I'm moving to my darkest blue and I'm going to focus on just that corner for my darkest blue this is the beautiful for me it's a combination of the word beautiful and blue I'm just kind of focusing on that corner and that's what value is and this is kind of the beginning steps of shading so those of you that have been wanting to learn how to do shading this is kind of an introductory lesson in it all right now you could if you really want to go even farther you could take a gray and mix a gray in a little bit if you wanted or maybe on the clouds like the bottom of the clouds maybe it's about to snow again and the same thing as when I went with my darker blues I can take the black with the gray and again if you really want to add to it you could throw in some of the black with the blue but again don't go crazy cuckoo all right and there is my cute little igloo with my value and what's kind of cool is we got um, if you think about the elements and principles of art we got value in here we got form because we're making it look three-dimensional we have shape because of the you know the blocks and the shape of the igloo we have color um, so you have a lot of your elements and principles in this picture and I think it turned out really great so um, as always please share your picture with me I can't wait to see it you can email it to me or use the Google form on my website all right have a great day